All right, yeah, welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today is Wildcard Friday. That means we're going to be playing whatever the FNM event ends up being, unless it's bad, and then we'll play something else. Today, we're going to be playing some Momia, which, you know, it's debatable in some people's eyes whether or not it's uh, bad, but, you know, I enjoy it quite a fair bit. So for those who don't know what this format is, it's essentially a... Um, a wild card kind of strange format where the rules of normal magic don't really apply. We're going to be playing a land every turn for the most part and then we're going to use the Momia emblem over here to discard a card and then create a token uh, that is the converted mana cost of X where X is the amount we choose to spend and we can only do that as a sorcery and only once each turn. So essentially what we want to be doing is playing a certain amount of lands and maybe playing on certain turns. So, for example, we don't really want to be doing any X zeros because there's no real zero uh, cost cards in Arena right now that are good. Uh, we do want to skip ones. Uh, there are a couple of mana docks, but there are far more worse creatures. Two drops have mana docks. Mana docks are typically pretty good because it allows you to go ahead of the curve. And then we want to try and work our way up essentially... I actually don't know what the number really is. It might be like 7 or 8, but if we get to something like 10, then we can X10 something like an Ulamog out, and that should, in theory, close out the game. That's at least the plan. Uh, it doesn't always go that way, because obviously this is RNGesus heavy uh, dot format. So, you know, we're going to see what we can do. It's free to enter anyway, and you get a rare. Most of the time, it's gems for me. So I'm going to get 40 gems for doing this, and, you know, get to make some fun content but yeah if you do enjoy momia you want to see more of it let me know down below as well as hitting that like button subscribing if you haven't done so already and yeah let's get to it shall we this video is brought to you by the generous support of our wonderful patrons and channel members that you see here if you'd like to support the channel and get access to cool content like sneak peeks bonus videos polls on future content or access to a personal deck critique from myself every month then hit the join button down below or check out the patreon link in the description with all that said, let's get into the gameplay. Alright, we're in. And this looks like a pretty good hand to me. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of that tracker because it's completely useless. So you want to try and get one color of each mana in play most of the time, just in case the cards that you Momia yourself into have activated abilities. Other than that, though, it doesn't particularly matter uh, what you end up playing. I'm going to skip the one drop slot. Some people don't. I'm of the opinion that one drops are bad. We're going to go for two drops, though, on the off chance that we can hit a mana dock. This is the downside of doing that, is that you end up getting two twos with Vigilance. Draft Chaff, essentially. And, as you may know, our opponent's skipping their two drops so that they can go higher on the curve, essentially. I could skip my three drops just to keep up with them, and I think I might do that. This allows me a little bit of pressure as well. I think it's just important to... Not just discard all your cards immediately, because if I went 1 drop, 2 drop, 3 drop, 4 drop, I would run out before our opponent, who's not playing their cards, gets... Oh, explore. Card draw in this format is also very good. Uh, I'd run out of lands to discard to the Momia emblem well before they did, and that would mean that they could go higher up the curve and, in general, get better costed cards against me. So I can get him for 2... Because they've drawn a card, I kind of feel like I want to be not playing a creature here. They're also just holding their cards, so like I'm not under any pressure to play my play my lands. There's very little strategy in this format, but where there is strategy, you best leverage it, otherwise you will lose. And the leverage of strategy here is, should I play lands or should I not? And should I use the Momia Emblem? Well, you should always play lands most of the time, I'd say. Up until the point where you're on top decks. So they're going to go for their 4 drop. They get a 4-3 that I think, yeah, gives elementals trample. Fair enough. Well, now I can't attack through. I do want to keep a little bit of pressure. Let's go for a 5 drop. Let's get rid of a snow-covered planes. And we get... Can block an additional creature each combat. 
Sure. Their 4-4 four four was a 4-3 that trades into my 5-drop 4-4. Four four. It's not great. Uh, am I willing to trade it off, though? Somewhat. Remember, it's every format, um, or every set in Magic as well, so I'm attacking there on the off chance that my 6-drop has, like, the raid mechanic from Ixalan. Something like that. You can never truly know what you're going to hit, but you can play a little bit of a guessing game. Ooh, not too bad, right? Pay two, pay four energy, put target creature card from a graveyard. Oh, that's not going to happen. But we do have a 5-5 five, five flyer anyway. That's pretty good. Opponent's going to have to dig for their flyer now. They've got... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. They've got Gargos. All right. So, I mean, it's an 8-7 with Vigilance. That's pretty bad. Doesn't have... Yeah, no reach here. It's pretty bad being vigilant. If I play a creature here and it targets Pelucrino, oh, Gargos, sorry, uh, then it'll fight my my demon and I'll be in trouble. But three, six, seven, we're going to go for it anyway. Sevens are kind of like the sweet spot. You know, a 5-5 five, five Hexproof's not bad if it wasn't for the Gargos that's over there. As you can maybe tell, they're going to, because they explored. Uh, when Reaper of Night attacks, if defending player has two or fewer cards, it gains flying. Okay. I think we can race them, right? Racing them seems like a thing. Uh, four, eight. Hang on, do we want to... Let's go pre-combat. Maybe my 8-drop has haste. I don't... I honestly don't know what's in an 8-drop slot that I would have to care about. A Death Toucher. That's pretty good. No more Gargos attacks, and we are one hit away from killing our opponent here. you got to be careful of... Is it 6-drops? Um, there's a demon that makes you draw cards until you hit a 4-drop. Oh, they hit Villis. No! <laughs> oh, that's so bad. Um, are they just dead, though? I'm forced to block. No, I'm trading here, unfortunately. Trading to put them to one. We do get a reanimation for all those creatures in our graveyard. Wowee. Alright, so if I can kill this Villis, then I win. This is the best card probably that they could have ever hit because they can pay black mana now to draw loads of cards and more cards means bigger things. Uh, so we're just going to go for it. Let's see. Four, eight, nine. See if we can hit anything good. Here we go. Uh, yeah, that's a... <laughs> that's a 3-4 that's a for 9 mana. So I can put them on 1. Doesn't really appeal to me, to be honest. Because it comes at a pretty hefty cost. If it's hasting, though, we would have just won on the spot there, which is something to consider. They're going to go for an X9. They get an 11-11 with Trample. They're going to win. It is clear to me now. So they're taking the chance. If they attack like this and I block with my 3-4, if I find any hasty creature, they lose. That's the bet that they're making. What's the number for hasty creatures? I honestly don't know. I don't know what the number for hasty creatures is. Uh, we kind of just have to go for it, though, because this guy's going to kill us anyway. So, what were we doing? Nines? Let's do a nine. Hey, we got the same thing, but with different art. <laughs> okay. Well, we're chump blocking Villis, unfortunately. 
We can also pay two life in order to make Villis turn this into a minus one, minus one. I'm not going to hover it because then they'll read their cards and we honestly our win con is that they don't read their cards. Shame I couldn't make this unblockable. They're up to tens. Impervious Great Worm. Not the best thing that it can be blocked by a 1-1. One, one. So, force blocks on our part and a trade. And here we go, our last nine before we die. <laughs> it's the same garbage card! No! <laughs> Alright. And that's all she wrote. You can get worked up about Iron Jesus, but I think if you... If you get upset that Iron Jesus was not your friend playing Momia, then you've got issues. I think that's a simple way to put it. This is not the format where you get upset about Iron Jesus not favoring you. Alright, what can get through? Jin Kataxius, who's just drawn them seven cards. Ah, I'm, I feel like there's a hasty 9-9 nine nine I'm not thinking of. The early GG. You hate to see it. I'm going to get that 3-4 again, aren't I? I'm going to ban... Oh! Creatures can't attack you! <gasps> Blazing Archon! Um, That's pretty good. So, um, I'm going to hold... I'm going to play my land so I can go up for 10 drops now. And I'm going to aim for Ulamog. They might also might deck themselves with Jin Kataxius. Or maybe I should just keep going 9 drops for more Blazing Archons. Because my win con is Jin Kataxius right now. This isn't legendary. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go for more Archons. And then they're only out is a creature that wipes the board. Okay. So this uh, Titanoth Rex can't attack me. Funnily enough. I missed what happened there, actually. I don't even know what that creature was. It was so insignificant to me. 25 cards. They're drawing 7 every turn. We can't have a maximum hand size anymore. They're going for 11s. 11 mana 10-10 ten, ten that doesn't do anything. Draw 7. Good game! <laughs> <laughs> Never scoop. Never scoop. Never early GG because you just make yourself look bad. Oh, beautiful. Three turn clock our opponent put themselves on with their own Jinkataxius. <laughs> you love to see it. Oh, I love Momia. Alright, let's see if I get 20 gems or a rare. It's also another spin of the wheel. But, you know, the odds always favor the house. <gasps> we actually got a rare. And it's a rare from the latest set. Oh, wow. This doesn't say a Kaldheim rare, right? No, it just says it will be at least a rare. Okay. I think Kaldheim's about the only place where I can get a rare that is useful. Maybe something in Jumpstart, maybe, as well. I don't know. Either way, that was one of my favorite games to memory, and it came from Momia, so... I'm so pleased. Next game. Alright. We're on the draw. Let's see if our opponent's even here. They are here. Do they go for one drops? One drops, I feel, is a trap. Some people fall for said trap. Our opponent's not one of them. Okay, let's see how many how many uh, mana costs we can skip in this game. I'm skipping two. I like to always go for two. I think the upside's just there. Yeah, let's go down this plains. Yeah, okay. That's not good. There's so many green mana docks that I think it's worth it. The odds are not like over 50%. 
Probably doesn't even come close to it, to be honest, but... It can be kind of backbreaking to get the early game advantage with a Mana Dock. Ooh, a new card. Plus one, plus oh, and Menace. Sure. Uh, I think we'll go for... Our opponent wants to play this game. I think we'll go for three drops. Let's go down to Plains. It's a one far with Reach. Could be worse. I'm just going to get in. If our opponent wants to trade a 3-2 for a 2-2, I'm totally fine with that. They weren't going to activate it anyway. Unless they weren't planning on playing 4 drops here. I might skip my 4 drop. It depends on how lucky our opponent gets here, I suppose. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, let's get a planes in there. I'm going to skip my skip my 4 drop because theirs is not that... Uh, much of a challenge to beat. It's a 3 mana 3-3. Three, three. It does literally nothing other than that. Except for potentially legend rule itself. One's going to go for the 5 drops though. Ends the battlefield. If you're permanent, you control left the battlefield. You gain 5 life. Revolt is another card you should consider. Uh, another mechanic you could consider, should I say. Uh, they do have a flyer now. And my blocker is not sufficient. So it's time to ramp up the... Aggression here. Go down the swamp. One damage to any target. And that's it. Okay. Well, we can hit X once. It's not useless, but it's getting that way with the mana cost that we're hitting right now. I might even just trade it off with Joyra, to be honest. I think we might be at that stage. Pre-combat Momia gets a Shimmer Dragon. Alright. Um, Iron Jesus. I see that you're on their side. You just... Not even not even hiding the fact that <laughs> you're not favoring me at all. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, okay, there's a guy Ruda. Six mana, six, six. Doesn't fly, notably. They would jump in the 5-6. I don't think they're going to really present much more damage than that. And I can't get them in range for Sir Kara to do anything here. Come on. Hit um, a 0-0, zero, zero, please, off of Momia. It happens. Seven drops. Here we go. It's just... <laughs> There's no words. There's no words to describe how unlucky this game is going. Oh, you also do a thing, don't you? Yeah, that's right. We even... It does draw cards. It's pretty useful. Uh, three, six, seven. So, you know, in a situation where we're not dying... It could be worse. Uh, another thing that doesn't do anything, and we're dead. Yeah, uh, you can have a good game. You weren't the cause of my horrendous luck. Iron Jesus was. But you know what? You can only laugh at it. You're only allowed to laugh. You can't get upset. If you get upset, go to bed. Just go to bed. All right, next game. All right, we're in on the draw. Our opponent is a fast mover and shaker. I love to see it. All right, they're very eager Momia players. And they're going to skip the two drop slot. Okay, I'm not going to. I never do. I always like to spin the wheel on two drops. One of these days it'll pay off. Uh, that is a boast, so I can actually make a 2-1 dwarf next turn. If our opponent doesn't play a three drop or... If their three drop doesn't block very well. Wow. Well, it can't block. I think I'm just going to make a 2-1 a on the attack here rather than play a three drop. It's a nice little bit of a mana sink. Isn't this... Uh, 
He kind of looks like the Boros commander that does fling shenanigans. I don't remember his name. He kind of looks exactly like him. Like, even the beard, I think, is swaying in that direction. Okay. So, we're officially on not blocking duty, but we made a 4-2, basically. So, that's kind of nice. Uh, I'm going to skip my 4-drops. Still not totally convinced I really need to care about what our opponent's got here. I'm going to draw a card. Sure. It's pretty good if you plan on skipping draws, or skipping Momias. I think I'll put some pressure on so our opponent feels like they can't do that anymore. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind, chat. No pressure here at all. Six drops. I think this is where Bells and Locke resides. In the six drops slot. I should probably know that, but... I think he's a... Uh... Oh, no. Oh, no, we lose. This makes you discard when it attacks. It's pretty powerful. As it turns out. Uh, I can get him for a th as a 3-4, though. Let's do that. Take my chances. Let's see if we get a Bells and Lock. Gotta get one today, right? Alright, I say 6-6 six, six that gained me 4 life. This Haunt of Hightower, though, is just gonna carry our opponent. It's basically like drawing a card. I'm gonna have to get empty handed as quickly as possible. Every time I discard off of Momia, uh, they get a counter. As well as when it attacks. So it will be too large before too long, and it's gonna stagger the uh, final mana cost that I land on. Bouncing lands is very odd for them. I don't necessarily know why they're doing it. They want to get up to, I guess, Kefnet's seven card hand so it can attack, which I suppose I respect that. They're at seven now. Alright, fair enough. Uh, three, six, seven. Let's go. I need a flyer. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, this game's over. I just can't win. I cannot win. Uh, maybe I can find an 8-drop. I think Mass Bounce exists in the 8-drop slot. I'm going to have to be there anyway because of Haunt of Hightower. Now to 12. Let's go with double planes. Up it goes, and come on. Draw a card and lose one life. Well, doesn't really do much for me, but sure. <laughs> Just get in with these guys, I suppose. They're at 27. I'm not going to win. I'm, in fact, I'm just literally dead on board right now, so let's go to the next game. Alrighty then, land go. On the play. Is our opponent here? Just be here, opponent. There we go. You only have to be here. No mountains for us this time. Always with the two drops. Give me a mana dock one time. It's a 3-3 three, three that doesn't untap unless I gain life. Alright, well that's a, an overstated blocker. We'll call it that. Sure as hell won't be using it to pressure my opponent. And I will be skipping threes here, I think. Yeah, this makes servos. Alright, I'm not too afraid of that. I 
I might even skip fours. It kind of depends on if they go for a three here and if it's scary. Wow. It was removal. Alright, I'm going to go for fours then. I need something to block. Got ourselves a mountain. Come on, give me a good four. Search your library for a thing. It's not there. <laughs> okay, well, it's a blocker. Say that much for sure. That deputy was brutal. At the very least, I suppose it doesn't make too much of a difference as long as our opponent doesn't draw very well. I wouldn't say they're failing in that task, though. I'd say they're doing just fine. I'm going to have to skip fives. I have to. They've got a 2-5 now, so they can pressure my life total a little bit. But that's about as far as that's going to go. I won't be blocking it, because otherwise they can float mana. I think this says sorcery speed, right? Yeah. Just check him. So it doesn't really apply. Wow. That means they can attack. With more than just the 2-5, yeah. Well. Sure. This is from OG Theros, right? Yeah, Doomweight Giant. It's like Legacy Staple. I say Legacy Staple, I don't think Enchantress has really uh, lived in Legacy for a long time. Uh, let's go for a 6. Let's see if we can get a Bells and Lock. That's just the luck that I need today. 5 mana... F oh, 6 mana 5-5 five, five with Death Touch. I'll take that. Honestly, it blocks into everything here quite nicely. It's going to be hard for them to find an answer to that, except for something that's bigger or flying. Come on, go for a six. Get a bells and lock. One time. Demon Lord. Demon Lord. Demon Lord. Nope. Oh, God, that's so good. It can be so good anyway. Up the curve, a little less likely, but if they get anything that generates tokens, that's card draw every turn and it will win in the game. Alright, we are at seven. I like seven. Seven's a lovely number. Especially when it gets us a Daragaz. Alright, the pressure is on. Two turn clock. Opponent's gonna need something else. What you got, opponent? What you got? Unfortunately, the gimmick of this card doesn't really apply because it's a token. So, you know, it gets exiled and then stops existing. Otherwise, it might have been quite nice. Come on, no flyers. Uh, that's, that's not great for us, admittedly. But it could have been worse. So do I take six here or do I block the Doomweight Giant? Because I do have to care about this, which is bigger. I think I block the Doomweight Giant. I just hope that my next creature blocks this Chaos more while I get in for some damage. I'm going to go in first. Just in case I absolutely kill myself uh, for eight. I do not want to kill myself with a bad hit that bounces Daragaz or something like that. That would be less than ideal. Here we go. A vanilla 7-6. Seven, it couldn't have been a vanilla 7-7. Seven, seven. That's just too good. <laughs> Where is this from? It's literally a token. Scaled worm. Token creature. Do they all say token creature? Oh, they, they do all say legendary token creature and whatnot. Alright, so it's not literally I've spawned in a token. I think that means, yep, they've got a vanilla 9-9, <laughs> so I win. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. 
when in doubt, when you get something that's atrociously bad, like Scaled Worm, just watch your opponent get something atroci atrociously bad like an Ancient Brontodon. With some bugged out empty text box. They don't make them like they used to, chat. Not anymore. Wow. Darigaz, the carried. Alright, well that, I think, is... Is that win number two or three? It's definitely... I think it's... Yeah, it's win number three for me. It's win number two for you guys. I had someone who just uh, didn't turn up. So I got my 20 gems for that. So we're basically like two and four right now. Technically. Not the best of luck. At all. In fact, it's just not my day. I'm a very bad gambler in general, but good lord. Is it showing today? Aaron Jesus just hates me. I think we got time for at least one more game, depending on how quickly it is, so... Let's go for it. Let's go. Alright, let's go! We're on the draw. Some people would tell you to scoop. I would tell you that you shouldn't bother. You should just play the game and have fun. All right. Two drops. Our opponent's skipping theirs. Firm believer, even though at no point has it ever really paid off. I'm a firm believer that two drops are pretty good. One of these days I'm going to be proven right. I do have a 2-1 flyer that proliferates, so that's cool. There's a possibility that I get something good out of that. Maybe a Yorva on turn three. That is a thing I will never block. Okay, that is unblockable. So let's get in for two. Uh, I'll have a counter. I'm gonna play a three drop. Equipped creatures have flying and haste. There's no creatures that are equipment, right? <laughs> Battle skill doesn't really count. Yeah, unblockable. It's blockable, unblockable, because if I deal damage to it, it ramps them. And I absolutely cannot allow that. Nothing good can come from killing that, even once. So, let's just consider this a race and be done with it. I was going for a four. All right. If they hit any dinosaurs, then they trigger the Enrage. I think I'm going to go straight to four here. Pre-combat, just in case I have something with counters on it, like a Pelucranos. Which I think should enter with counters, right? It wouldn't enter as a zero zero. Guess we'll find out. Ooh, a Lender. A Lender's pretty good, actually. So whenever another creature dies, you put a counter on it, and then my Skyship Plunderer here should have the ability to proliferate that. Make a very large creature that as long as it dies and isn't exiled, which short of Deputy of Detention, which we've seen today, is unlikely to happen. I think they put the uh, the Archon thing. Ashen no, it's not Archon. It's Ashen Rider, right? I think they put that into Arena as part of the plumping of Momia. All right, I'm going to go for our five drops, it seems. Come on, zero zeros. I don't know if they exist in the five drop slot, but I'd love to see one right now. Or something that kills itself anyway and triggers my lender. That's the dream. I think they've... Have they got a clone? Maybe they've got, like, Marit here? That would enter as a 0-0, zero zero though, right? Oh, it was a 0-0... Zero zero... It was a 0-0 zero zero dinosaur. Maybe it was a shapeshifter then with Changeling. Never done it. Yeah, I think they got a changeling. It's a shame when you don't see the zero zeros because you can never really tell what it is. It had to be like a Marit, maybe. Which would enter as a zero zero. I don't know if it would enter and let you choose. 
I just don't know what else it could be. I don't think there's a, a zero zero changeling other than that, right? Other than that, it'd have to be a dinosaur. So what dinosaur is a zero zero by default? Again, I don't know if there is one. It's weird. Anyway, uh, that's probably going to do it for today's video anyway. Bit of a weird one to end on, but it's what we're going to be doing. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Anyway, get on to the Friday Night Magic event for your free 40 gems. It's probably what it's going to be. Maybe a throwaway rare. Uh, do we actually have a pack to open? We do. I don't think it is anything, though. Ooh, it's actually a rare. Thieving Skydiver. Ah. Uh, it's pretty much a junk rare. So, I'm just going to pretend that it was 20 gems and be happier with that. Uh, but yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video anyway. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. As usual, leave a comment down below. If you've had any funny Mome experiences, I would be... Uh, thrilled to hear about them if they do exist <laughs> but yeah take care guys and i'll see you on sunday for some carl time sealed actually so stay tuned for that ta -ra.